All month here at Huntley Street, we've been featuring a new documentary that I've had a privilege to produce called Story in the Stars. And it's Blu-ray, DVD, and digital copy all in one case. And just yesterday, we were able to tell you about the coffee table book. It literally just came in off the presses. And it's a beautiful presentation of the story that's in the stars, the message of salvation. And today, I have the privilege of interviewing two people that I call dear friends, Julian and Emily Conneth, all the way from New Zealand and Australia. They're here to tell us about this incredible journey that we've taken together as, as friends. Uh, we've only known each other a couple of years, mm -hmm. but before we get into the interview, I want to say thank you so much for being here. Yeah, thanks for having us on. Yeah, how long have you guys been in Canada now? Since last September, so six or eight months or so. Yeah, and you came at a great time. You left Australia when it was warm and sunny, and then you came to Canada because you got tired of beautiful beaches and nice weather, right? <laughs> Uh, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's talk about the first time that we met, okay? It was uh, just about two years ago. I was invited to go speak in, in Thailand by a Canadian pastor who was, who was there in the church. And in the time that the invitation came and the time I actually got to go to Thailand, they had switched pastors, mm -hmm. right? One had stepped down and enter your pastor from Australia, mm -hmm. right? Uh -huh. And so in between the time they invited me, uh, the old pastor forgot to tell the new pastor that I was coming. Yeah. So I'm stranded at the uh, airport in Bangkok waiting to find my way, you know, to Patea. And you guys had gone there to see your pastor, right? Yeah. So tell us um, what led you to, to go there, Em. Uh, well, our pastors had just taken over a church there a few months earlier. And so basically we just wanted to go and see how they were going and visit them. And I think we arrived the day before you got there. Okay. So we only found out that you were coming the day after we arrived. Okay, and, and you were a little jet lagged and tired. Yep, yeah, we weren't too excited to hear about this Hebraic Roots first wow, century. Wow, that was a little <laughs> Okay. Um, no, that's good. That's your true reaction. And you've told me many times that when you found out you weren't overly excited either, right, Julia? Yeah, well, exactly. I mean, we came to Thailand. I mean, I was, I was personally excited. We've been a couple of times on a few missions trips and things. And so I'd seen some pretty cool stuff. You know, I was expecting yeah. to lay some hands on some people and, and uh, all of that good stuff. And, yeah. and then our pastors kind of announced and said that uh, we've got a guy coming from Canada who's going to speak on Hebraic roots uh, tomorrow. So he's going to be there for like four days. And I thought, wow. That sounds really boring, to be honest. Wow, that's, that's extremely <laughs> hurtful. Okay. But, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> I, I know, I know. You know, and yeah, uh, yeah we, we went along and... Um, yeah, you came to the meeting and the meeting, yeah. we, we had never met before and I was doing the teaching mm -hmm. and um, always during, during my teaching, I do a segment where I have a prayer shawl and I need somebody to come up and be my my Jesus. Jesus to stand under uh -huh. the prayer shell and everybody else was Asian and there was you so you were the most uh, Jesusly looking yeah, type I had person. My, my long hair back then as well. So. That's right and I called you up and you heard the teaching and, and I want you to tell me how that impacted you. Yeah well I guess um, you know I, I went in with an open mind and things like that and uh, it, it absolutely blew me away. Like I I've been a Christian for a few years now and I never ever heard of of uh, the Hebraic roots or mm. um, the, the things that you were teaching on. And so for me, this was just, it, it brought color to my whole Christianity. That's a nice and, way to say it, yeah. And it was just amazing for me. So it actually inspired me to uh, start Bible college. That, Your teaching inspired me to start You know, Bible that's college. so great how, how God can do that. Yeah, yeah. And so you guys went, went back home to Australia. And what was the sales pitch to, to the team back home? <laughs> <laughs> there was this meeting I didn't want to go to, ended up not being so bad, you mm -hmm. got to bring this guy in. Was that how the pitch went, kind of? <laughs> Pretty much. Similar to that. Pretty much, okay. yeah. I, um, I said to our pastors back home, I said, you've got to have him. You know, he's going to bring something amazing to our church. And, and sure enough, you know, they put the trust in and, and said, mm. yep, Joe, come down. And, uh, yeah, I had to get up in front of the whole church and kind of sell you uh, <laughs> to our church and wow. so okay. I put my reputation on the line. <laughs> yeah. Now your reputation could have been affected because the first night I came out to meet uh, you guys and the whole pastoral team and the ministry team, uh, how did that go down that first night? It was hilarious. Uh, well I remember we were sitting around the dining table 
and there was all the leaders of our church there, and no one. And knew we had you. said five words to each other in Thailand. Yeah. I mean, really. Yeah, we didn't know you that much either. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> we're all getting to know you, and I remember one of the leaders at our church asked you, "So, what sort of church do you go to back in Tha uh, back in Canada?" Yeah. And uh, Joe said, "Oh no, we don't go to church," in his <laughs> joking way, and everyone kind of like sat there shocked Awkward. for a moment, and then there was like the laughter broke the silence. <laughs> yeah, and then we had a tremendous uh, week of ministry uh, there. But what I want to focus on is, you know, it's great to see what God did and how we met in Thailand and how he brought me, you know, my wife Karen to Australia and we connected a little bit more there. Mm -hmm. But after we left, God kind of started, began speaking to you about leaving the comfort of home and, and, and traveling. How did, how, did that, how did you feel, Emily, about your husband saying, hey, let's go to Canada? Well, <laughs> yeah, I'd lived in Australia my whole life and lived in the same town since I was about three years old. So mm. it was a big deal to, I guess, pick up and leave. But at the same time, it felt like the right thing to do um, okay. work-wise and what was going on in our lives. It seemed like now was the time to do that. So, And we'd okay. always wanted to travel. Yeah, so. Okay. Well, I remember on the Friday night speaking to the youth group, and mm -hmm. you guys came out to hear, and that's one of the first times I ever did Story in the Stars, the full presentation. Yeah. D what, what did that do to you? <laughs> I, know, I know it affected you, Julian. Yeah, well, like I said, I'd only really been a Christian for a couple of years, and uh, personally, I had uh, in my past gone to horoscopes and things like that, yeah. and, and I looked at those yeah. things with uh, an interest or uh, looking for like a... Uh, guidance or things like that. Mm. So when you started speaking on constellations and, and zodiacs and things like that, I mean, I went, whoa, Joe, <laughs> back it up, buddy. Like, yeah, you know, yeah. and that was, um, it was interesting. But as I, as we heard it, uh, the more of the teaching coming out and, mm -hmm. and uh, you just couldn't refute it. I mean, it was just incredible. So that impacted me deeply. I remember driving you guys back to the uh, airport to That's Sydney. right, a three-hour drive from where yeah. you to Sydney, yeah. You know, you got a bit of time to think about things on the drive, and it kind of struck me, hit me that, wow, this thing is going to be massive. Mm. Uh, this story in the stars is going to really uh, break astrology off people's lives, right. you know, really set people free from that sort of a thing. And yeah. the, the magnitude of it really started to sink in. Okay. And uh, the next month, my son and I went back to Thailand, actually, to minister on, yeah. a, on a separate trip. And we started a Kickstarter campaign, mm -hmm. which actually started here at 100 Huntley Street. I came on the show with John Hull, and we did an appeal for Kickstarter, and we were able to raise all the funds to make the film. It was extraordinary. And you guys even participated in the Kickstarter fund back home in Australia. Yeah, that was about a year ago now. Yeah. And, uh, and did you ever think, though, Julian, when you gave money towards the Kickstarter campaign <laughs> that you'd kind of be paying yourself in advance? No, not at all. We, <laughs> we had absolutely no plans of coming to Canada at that point. That's amazing. So I was expecting to yeah. receive the DVD uh, later that year. but Well, you'll still get a DVD. Don't worry oh, about good. that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so the Lord speaks to you about coming to Canada. Tell me about that journey because you get here, you have your plans, you have your apartment picked out, you have your jobs picked out, you know exactly how it's going to go, and then bam. God changes everything. What happened then? Well, we arrived and I actually emailed your wife, Karen, and asked if we could stay with you guys for 10 days when we got here, just so we'd have a place to go from the airport. And in that time, yeah. we were hoping to organize all that work and where we we're going to live and everything. Mm -hmm. And just, it all fell through. Nothing happened. We went knocking on doors looking for a place Literally. to stay. Yeah. I remember that. Yeah, and just nothing was coming up and we didn't know what was happening. We'd come across the other side of the world and yeah, it just wasn't so happening God, for us. God, what's going on? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I remember that morning where you kind of reached a breaking point mm -hmm. and what happened there, man? Yeah, well, it had been a journey leading up to that and uh, for the last couple of years and we were really stepping out in faith coming up here and uh, and nothing was really opening, like Em said, you know, the doors mm -hmm. were closing and mm -hmm. uh, I've been a graphic designer for 10 years now and, and nothing. I couldn't get any get any work and uh, uh, yeah, I just came up like broken. I was almost frustrated and, you know, I still remember that real brutal, honest conversation yeah, with God going, what is my faith worth to you? Mm -hmm. And I know that's heavy, like a lot of people would think that <laughs> that's bold, you know, saying something yeah. like that to God, but yeah. that was where my, my heart was at, I was just at that point where 
God, what's my faith with you right now? Yeah. And I remember from that conversation, we decided, hey, you guys are going to stay with us. And so God literally brought you from the other side of the planet to our front door. And here you are gifted in graphic design. And here you are gifted in writing and really not having an opportunity to express that. Mm -hmm. And then God gives us the vision for Story in the Stars, the documentary, mm -hmm. which, by the way, it was Emily who wrote the script for Story in the Stars. I appreciate getting the credit for writing and making the film. I, I, I'm in the film, hosting the film, but Emily really wrote the script based on the teaching. And, and now, here it is, you know, we're holding it in our hands. It just arrived yesterday, the coffee table book. First of all, amazing job. You guys, you took the teaching, uh, you wrote it out in a way that's so eloquent. It's laid out in a way that people can understand. They can see the whole, the whole story. And then you did all the graphics, design, and layout for it. What's it like just to have this thing in your hands now? Yeah, well, I mean, it's kind of, uh, like we said, it's been a real journey. And to have this, I mean, my heart behind this whole concept of doing the coffee table book was, you know, the document documentary is fantastic. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people are going to get a lot out of it. But this was something that, uh, you know, we had the idea when we came to church that time. I was just sitting in the back and I said, Joe, yeah. you know, why don't we do a coffee table book for Story in the you Stars? You just kind of spat out the idea. Yeah. And you thought, well, that's a pretty good idea. And... You know, my heart behind it was, let's try and get this thing on uh, receptions at doctors mm -hmm. and dentists and small groups. And, you know, this is like a... Yeah, people's homes on the exactly. coffee tables. Yeah. It's the sort of thing that you could go out to coffee with a, a friend or someone that you've been discipling and, and sit down and, and have a conversation about mm -hmm. the story and the stars. Yeah, fantastic. We are so thrilled to have it. And we're making this available to you for this final week in March and leading up into April. And we want you to be able to take this and, and put it literally on your coffee table. People are going to come to your house and they're going to see story in the stars. They're going to flip through it. They're going to see pictures of, of Aquarius and all of these bizarre images. And some people who are even into astrology are going to pick it up thinking, oh, I'm a Pisces. I wonder what it says about me. And then they're going to turn to the page about Pisces and realize it's not about them. It's about Jesus. And every constellation, every chart, everything that they put into this book is going to lead and point people to Christ. And we want you to get a hold of, of this book and the, the Blu-ray, DVD, digital copy as well. And we know that as you watch this, it's going to encourage you as a believer. It's going to challenge those who aren't believers and those who have no faith at all. I think it's going to cause them to reflect and say, how did this all come to be? How could all the constellations line up? On the night of his birth, the planets, the stars, and everything came to be perfectly. The morning of his resurrection, the chains of the fish were, were, were broken and they were set free. There really is a story in the stars. And month after month, week after week, and night after night, that story is up there in the sky. All we have to do is look. And we want to make sure that you guys get a hold of this.